The transvaginal cervical ischemic cerclage is a technique performed in women with history of cervical incompetence with more than two late miscarriages before 24 weeks with prior failure of preventive McDonald cerclage. A high stop prosthetic tape made by CL Medical is being used. It's a polypropylene sling normally used for stress urinary incontinence. For this surgery, you will need instruments for transvaginal surgery. The first step of the surgery is to grip the cervix with Pozzi forceps and to infiltrate it. We use lidocaine 1% dilute dose in serum saline. 5 ml is injected at the front and the back of the cervix. The second step consists in performing with a scalpel an anterior semicircular colpotomy on the cervicovaginal junction. The third step consists in performing a dissection of the vaginal and the uterus with scissors to enable bladder retraction and exposure of the cervical ischemic junction. The bladder has to be reclined with a vaginal valve. A lateral digital dissection at the level of the vascular pedicle of the bladder allows the release of the uterine pedicle. The fourth step consists in performing a posterior colpotomy with scalpel and to open the Douglas pouch with a straightforward scissor cut. When this step is over, according to the anatomical position, an adjustable sheet corresponding to the best curvature is chosen. The back finger will hold the uterus sacral ligament, which is hooked from the inside by the adjustable sheet. The uterine pedicle has first identified. The eye stop tape is applied to adjustable sheet and click on without difficulty. The adjustable sheet is then pushed up inside and behind the uterus sacral ligament and inside the uterus pedicle. Temporarily, the sling is fixed laterally. A similar technique is performed on the control lateral side. If the anatomy requires it, the curvature on the adjustable sheet can be modified to simplify the procedure. To facilitate the motion of the adjustable sheet, the vaginal retractor can be removed. The adjustable sheet is then clicked on the sling and the opposite movement is performed. The motion of the sling must be done without forcing. The next step consists in placing the sling at the level of the isthmus. Attraction of the sling is then performed in order to fix the sling on the uterus isthmus, using two non-absorbable situ stitches. The two situ stitches are be performed to help us maintain the sling in traction. Once the two stitches have been tied up, the sling can be cut off. The technique is then performed in the same way in control lateral. The second helper performs attraction on the sling and two non-absorbable situ stitches are added between the top of the cervix and the isthmus, as well as the first sling has been previously sutured. At the end of the operation, the surplus of the sling is cut off so that it doesn't form an irritative core for the bladder. The positioning of the sling is now over. The anterior and posterior vagina must be sutured. On the anterior vaginal, a continuous suture is performed using absorbable suture zero. This continuous suture is designed to be hemostatic on the pericervical incision zones.
two techniques is identical on the posterior vagina. At the end of the operation, the urinary catheter placed before surgery can be removed. The only post-operative therapy will be non-steroidal anti-inflammatory suppository to avoid any contraction. At the end of surgery, an ultrasound scan is usually done in order to be able to locate the cerclage. The upper cervical cerclage is very echogenic, which will allow a close supervision of the cervix during all the pregnancy. On the 3D ultrasound pictures, the cerclage, the cervix and the cervical orifice can be usually spotted. As we can see in dynamic, the pressure upon the uterine fundus does not in any way modify the opening of the cervix and there is no modification of the external orifice of the cervix. This surgery is usually performed in an ambulatory care setting.